Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Tech Strong Unplugged. I'm your host, Natan Solomon, and this is episode 25 of our series. In this episode, we're taking you to ViewConf 2024. At ViewConf, our co-host Cassandra Chin met up with Alexander Lichter, a versatile VEP engineering consultant, YouTuber, and open source contributor. Alex discusses the importance of problem-driven development, the value of educating others through YouTube, and the challenges of balancing multiple projects as a solo entrepreneur. Without further ado, let's head over to ViewConf 2024. Welcome back to Textron Unplugged. I'm Cassandra Chin, and today we're here with Alex. Hey, how's it going? Very good. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, I'm Alex. I am a web engineer consultant by day. So my, my job is more or less to help companies that have problems, in this case with Vue and Nux, so the front-end frameworks and the applications that are okay. We have some problems with performance or we want someone to review the applications. We yeah, just need some help and then I'm there. So like, sure, we can make it happen. Um, and besides that, yeah, I'm running my own company. So a little one-man show, so to say, but working together with lots of amazing people. Um, and I do YouTube, I do some live streams as well. And I'm also an open source. And that's more or less about me. So how did he actually get started into technology? So it's really funny, like around the age of three, I have like the vivid memory of my grandfather, who back in time was really into like computers, like big things back then. And he was like, yeah, let's uh, sit in front of it. Let's play a little bit. It was, I think back then, this kind of Mario clone. And I was hooked immediately. So that was pretty funny. Uh, and from then on, I always like was interested in that, like exploring more things. And I think from there... Uh, I got into like, okay, how to use the internet, like back in times where it was not like generally available, like logging in for like the phone. It was, it was really weird with like uh, the modems and stuff. Um, and like my family was always, uh, let's say, supporting that. Also together with my, my mom or my grandpa, checking out more and more. And yeah, then I figured out, okay, the internet is like a, a big place. You can, you can find so many things there. And then my cousin came out of the face and like, oh yeah, like around the age of like 10 or something, like, oh yeah, that, that guy needs his own email address. Because of course, at some point it would be nice to register on your own and so on. And that must have sounded like the old story from back in time. I like, guess nowadays, like everybody has like a Google account and whatnot. Um, but that's how I got started with like computers in general. But at some point it was like, it's cool to use all that, but I want to see how to create something like that. I want to see how I can also do something, what I see in the internet, how I see when I open my applications. And I think the biggest point was at the age of like 13, where like the Minecraft hype was really big, it was like back then in Nvidia, and there was the multiplayer, of course. So back in time, I was, I was then checking, how exactly can, can I change something in Minecraft server? How can I like add in something to the game, like modding the game? And there was, there was a big... Like a, a big mod called Bucket in time written in Java and that brought me to okay let's learn Java let's do some things and that's how I started getting into programming it's interesting you got into programming using Minecraft because yeah. that's actually the same way I got into programming Real. that's really cool lovely so Minecraft has really been around for a long time oh yeah it's uh, it's crazy I feel a bit old when I think back now like oh, 11 no 11, 11, more than half of a year I to go uh, started, but it's still there. It's played by so many people, has evolved. And I think kids are still modding and doing the kind of things you were doing. For sure. Probably a bit different. Also not at Minecraft itself. Back then, they didn't uh, give like that many official ways of doing it. So it was a lot of community-driven. And, well, uh, by now, it's I think it's more official. Also, the people back then that worked on Bucket, they got hired by Mojang to work on it full-time. So that's really cool. Actually, it's still a bit community-driven. Yeah, I, I haven't been in the, the scene for a while, but every now and then I still like see some old plugins, sometimes bring a comment like, oh, hey, when you update, and I uh, won't, won't happen, I'm afraid. But good thing is also like uh, when I started developing these things and even became like uh, part of the bucket team for like reviewing other plugins, I was like 16, something like that. Um, it was quite an experience also to like, okay, how to do open source, how to write proper issues. Like, okay, I downloaded a mod and it didn't work. So course I, I i always have that in my mind the first time i i told someone like okay hey, i used it and it didn't work it was the the worst description ever because i just like okay hey it doesn't work and now i see this as open source maintainer i see it quite often people do exactly the same and i always remind myself of okay i did exactly the same and back then nobody told me hey this is how you can do it better 
people just like, hey, it's not helpful. And they were right. It, it wasn't really helpful. Um, but I learned how to do it better. And now I also like when people just say like, hey, okay, that doesn't work. I'm like, okay, here are a few steps to, to help us figure out how we can help you. Because just saying it doesn't work, that, that doesn't lead us anywhere. Because commonly, the typical, okay, it works for me. It might not work for you, but we have to figure out why. So interesting that you actually learned how to do open source from a game. It's, it's really funny. Like, yeah, starting with, starting with issues, starting like publishing code here and there. Um, but also at some point, I then moved a little bit away from it because then I figured, okay, I want to show my, my work on not only on the, like, the modding side, but also on my own side. And then I started getting into web development, into a bit of PHP. Um, and that was, that was very interesting because Java for me was always like big and bulky and lots of code. And PHP was like, it was more or less flexible. You can just write it very easily and get to what you want with less code was a bit less structured but for me it was okay i can i have to write less to achieve the same so all interesting stuff what kind of apps did you write um so for for web applications yeah i started with like my my own uh portfolio more or less showing like my my minecraft plugins as well then like some simple thing like currency converters and stuff also did it in java once um i wrote some more scripts, even like with people can log in, they can say, hey, I vote for a specific plugin to be developed, like some more complex system, all from scratch, like with just PHP, no like framework attached. So at the time, did currency converters exist on websites at the time? Uh, yeah, they were there for sure. That's that's always that was just like a little. So what's your like motivation to like create it? So for for this, it was basically I was also very active in the forum and they had like a forum currency and then like taking this mapping this to like I don't know this three hundred uh, like forum gold is worth a euro. Um, that was something that wasn't exactly like that there. So and also was a nice exercise of okay like it's it's probably also difficult to build. Let's do it. Let's figure out how it's something to to, to do it and. That also resembles what I did with Minecraft. Like, yeah, I wanted to reach a goal. I wanted to change certain things. And I had to figure out how. That's commonly how I learn. With like, okay, I have a project and I want to uh, achieve a goal that could be to solve my own needs, that could be to solve needs of friends and family or of um, the community as well. And then it starts with, okay, how to do that? What do I need to learn for that? What new skills do I need? What can I reuse? So yeah, that's commonly how it's like problem driven, let's say, right? <laughs> when I develop. Do you want to talk a little about like more of what you're doing now? Um, so right now I am uh, in, well, besides my day job of uh, helping companies and also individuals, I, I am lost in open source. So there I am the maintainer of a web framework called Nuxjs. I uh, also mentioned briefly before and another interview guest, Daniel, is also on the team. Um, so the idea is that's a web framework that helps people building web applications very easily. Uh, we want to make it even better and more easier for the users, fix all the problems and think of how we can make it even better. So I think that's one of the things I pursue in terms of coding openly. Another thing that I really like is also educating people about that because building amazing features is important, fixing bugs is important, but if you have a really cool feature but nobody knows how to use it, that's not really helpful. So of course there's like documentation, but sometimes the documentation of like, okay, here's how you use it, but you might need more context. You might go like, okay, hey, these are some cases where it's good. Here are like three more examples. And some people needed extra context. Some people feel like, okay, I don't need it. That's why I decided in uh, September 2023 to start a YouTube channel around that one video a week. And um, yeah, to help people understanding more things around Dux.js and UJS. Like, it's really interesting how you like educate people through YouTube. It's lovely. Also, there are so many, like I started also writing blog posts. Now I don't have that much time at the moment to do that. But with videos, it's it gives more context. But also, I know lots of people are very visual learners. So if they see how something does it, uh, someone d does it, they can code along, or you can say like, "Okay, I got it. I get the code. Uh, I'll have a look into that." That's um, yeah, that works pretty well. And people so far are really happy. Are your videos like live streams? Uh, I have some live streams as well, but commonly I pre-produce them. So um, I. I commonly have like a topic I decide on, usually what people in the community are interested in or what I think could be interesting for them. Then I prepare them as in, okay, I do some research, I build a little demo application, I think what, what I want to tell, it shouldn't be too long, it shouldn't be too short. And then I record them, the videos, I give it to my editor, goes to post-production, 
and the editor will cut out well the O's and M's and the the long parts are not that necessary and maybe my mistakes and in the end like a probably like 10 to 20 minutes video comes out and they will be do you ever engage with like user feedback or like quite a lot so all the videos are premiering on youtube so we always have a live chat for that and then like also answering questions there on demand also did that actually this morning was a release uh, because i'm based in europe and then uh, we're right here in, in new orleans so the times are different we're, like waking up in the morning premiering answering some questions and also on the comments of course if somebody is like uh, writing a comment i try to answer them either there's a question of like how do i use this and this what's of this case so i try to be very responsive there i think it's really cool how you engage them thanks thanks a lot yeah I'm, i think this is very important to understand the needs of the people and if i see like okay lots of people want a certain type of content then that's also good for me to plan ahead so i see what people are interested in or maybe also what I can improve in explaining. So if people maybe didn't understand a certain part of the video, they know for next time, okay, I can put more focus on there or explain different things. Personally, I use YouTube the most for tutorials like yours. Great, yeah. And I, I think it's it's so good because there's so much content out there and it's free, right? I, I don't charge anything for that. Uh, and that's that's like a way to learn. I also learned back in times so YouTube tutorials and I'm very happy to give a little bit back to the community uh, and to help people that might also you said you also owned a company yes correct so, um, that's also more than me but um it's a one-man show let's say uh, for doing consultancy and also then like covering all the video part and well um you have to write invoices expenses and something has to pay the bills as well so open source is really full but unfortunately not that many people can live from doing open source and i think it's it, it, I hope in a way that will change in the future. But for me, it's I have time for open source because my consultancy business, so my freelance business is paying the bills. For your consultancy business, do you like write applications for other people? Uh, I started with that more or less. I don't do it that often. I really try and focus helping them with my expert knowledge. Um, if they say like, okay, hey, can you also implement that? Then I already say no. But also I... I try to focus on what I can improve there because there are lots of really good full stack developers. Um, but of course, if you're the maintainer of a framework, if you're like really deep into all the internals, then the knowledge is better used to help people fix some problems. So I also, on the other hand, it helps to understand the project and why people have certain issues. So maybe I can also go the other way around and say, okay, if multiple of my clients, they have problems with you or not, maybe... I can make a video about it or document it or fix it maybe to make the life better. And also there, there are lots of people. I mean, I only see a small subset, but there may be lots of other people suffering from that or having the same issue that are the silent majority. So yeah, I hope it uh, helps. Them. I think that's really great to use your knowledge to help fix their problems. Like sometimes helping fix their problems is more valuable than just writing it for them. For sure. Yeah. And also like help them understand, okay, you have this issue. Here's why. Like explain not only this is the fix, but here is how you can circumvent that or here is the concept behind it um and yeah that's the classic analogy with like okay um that i i want to transfer knowledge on behalf so it's not like i'm i'm the person as i said fix them it's really like okay ideally they understand the next time the same issue happens they can do it on their own and they don't have to call me which makes me a little bit obsolete over time but in a way it's also for them <laughs> what is a typical work day like for you um that's really that's really different actually. I don't have the typical work day because I I don't have like one or two like big projects. It's more like I have uh, one or two handful of clients, uh, and then I some people say like okay we have uh, we have meetings every week or every two weeks we discuss things. Some people say let's um, here's an issue, uh, please solve that and tell us at least end of next week uh, how how you did it or what your findings. Um, so sometimes I have calls with people. Sometimes. I don't. Sometimes I work on, on issues. Sometimes I prepare a YouTube video. Sometimes we open source and sometimes I do live stream. So it's it's a lot of balls to juggle every day. For sure. Yeah. And uh, well, self-discipline and like having some kind of time management is pretty essential for that. It's still one thing I think I could get better at just because the more things, as I said, the more balls to juggle, the harder it gets to keep it all in shape. And of course, you have deadlines here and there. You don't want to like, you want to meet them. You don't want to postpone things again and again uh, and that's that's also a skill to acquire but you also get there with by time you don't start with like 100 projects you start with one then maybe another one comes in and then you go up step by step 
I see. And Nick, we've had a really good chat today, so thank you. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, if there are any questions, as usual, let's know.